Hello everyone, welcome to another iClone Basics tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on dragging and dropping. Uh, how you can use both your left and right, right uh, mouse buttons to drag and drop uh, props, objects, materials, and whatnot into your scene. So let's get started first of all by dragging and dropping something into our scene. So we need to go over to the content window here on the left. This is where you can find all your content. And in the set tab, we're going to go to props, just double click on it, into 3D blocks. And in 3D blocks, we have all sorts of different uh, primitive shapes. We also have a folder called wall and floor, which I'm going to double click on. And if I want to apply something to my scene, I can just double click it from the content manager, like this floor here, for example. I'll press Control Z and undo that. Or I can simply just click and drag it to anywhere on my scene. You can see that I've just applied that to my scene there. And we have this, you know, big, huge uh, looking floor on our scene. We can do that for our other categories as well. Like if we wanted to just go, go back to our uh, 3D blocks here, we'll take a sphere. We're going to be applying stuff to these objects later. So we'll just apply the sphere uh, right over there. And we can go to uh, we have containers. I'm going to apply a container to, uh, to my scene as well. We'll just uh, select this uh, bull 003. That looks good right there. So you can see we've applied these uh, two primitives just by left clicking and dragging. And you can also go to your actor tab. We'll go to avatar. G6 characters and bring in our boy Mason. So that's just left clicking and dragging. That's pretty much how you can apply uh, stuff to your scene. Now let's focus on applying materials to your objects. Now in terms of clicking and dragging, you can do this by, uh, if you have an explore window open, just uh, I'm gonna go alt tab over to my explore window here and I have a bunch of textures that are prepared. I have this floor folder and I have a number of different uh, texture uh, textures that I've created from uh, bitmap to material, as you can see indicated in the name here. Now, if I want to apply any of these materials to my uh, to any proper object in my scene, I can simply just uh, left click and drag it like this. And if I left click and drag this uh, diffuse texture to my floor, it'll apply that diffuse texture uh, directly to my floor. Now, I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. We'll go back into iClone here, so we can Control Z that. To give myself more options, what I can do is I can right click and drag it from the explore window. And once I apply it to my floor, then I have these options here for image layer, plane and billboard, which we'll talk about later. But we also have this one 201 default, and that is the name of the uh, the floor prop. Uh, OK, so we have diffuse map, opacity map, all these maps right here. As you can see, this is a diffuse map. So I'll just select diffuse map right here. And you can see it applies to our floor, but uh, it's a little bit large, so we need to do some uh, UV mapping. Now to adjust the materials on your floor, make sure your floor is selected. Select the uh, materials up here, the materials tab, and in diffuse, you can see there's a little uh, chain link thing here. And that means that it's basically linked from the Explorer. If you want this to embed into your prop, uh, you have to go down here and you have to select embed texture. If you don't do that, then ne the next time you load up your project, if you move that texture to another Explorer folder, it will not show up properly. All right, so we have this diffuse. Now what I wanna make sure that I do is because we're also going to add a bump map, I wanna go down here into the UV settings and I wanna select Affect All Channels. And this will ensure that basically when I do any UV mapping or changing of the UV settings, it'll apply to all of these texture channels up here. So let's go ahead and uh, alt tab back to our Explorer window and we have this bump map right here. I can right click and drag that onto my floor the exact same way and apply this one to the bump channel right here. And you can see that effect that it has on the bump channel. So I'm gonna go here again and embed the same texture right here. And we can take the bump uh, uh, strength up or down. You can see the effect that it has there. But of course we want it to be a little bit smaller, a little bit uh, tile a little bit more. So let's go to our tiling and let's select maybe seven on the U axis and seven on the V axis right there. And then we have the material that's applied uh, uh, that, that has affected all the materials. As you can see here, our bump map has tiled along with the diffuse map. So that's cool. Let's go back to our, uh, our textures here. And let's go back to our regular textures map, uh, texture maps folder. I'm going to do this one more time just to show you a different type of uh, UV setting. Um, so let's go over to our wood planks overlapping here. I'm just going to simply left click and drag this onto my bowl. And we have a nice looking uh, UV mapping uh, right there on the bowl. If we want to, uh, you know, adjust the settings of this, we can, uh, you can see on the top here, we have it sort of weird where it's, uh, you know, across the uh, top there in a sort of a weird way. If we want to change that, the, uh, the rim of the uh, bowl, uh, the bottom looks good, but the rim looks a little bit different. Let's go ahead and check our UV settings. We're going to map this to a spherical plane. 
because well we pretty much have half a sphere you know it's like half a sphere with the top cut off there uh, let's go do that and let's choose the uh, Z axis I press the uh, control Q hotkey that'll bring up my gizmo here and you can see the Q or the Z axis is this blue arrow here so we're gonna be wrapping it around that basically and let's go ahead and select apply and when we do that we get a bit more of an accurate uh, representation of what a wooden bowl would look like or a, you know whatever kind of bowl this is and for other ways of applying material the easiest way that I normally like to use is for example go to any one of these texture channels let's go to this blend one for example simply double click the texture channel and then you can apply any of the uh, blend maps that come with the iClone default uh, folder which you can see up top here the path or you can choose your own uh, so let's just choose this blend one right here and apply that and you can see whoops it applies a little bit too dark so uh, what we need to do is take our blend channel and change the blend mode from multiply to addition and then we get this uh, kind of addition it looks like a kind of an aged uh, wood or something like that and we can take the strength down a little bit just to give our uh, you know wooden bowl a bit more character there and uh, that's that now if you want to use any of iClone's embedded media on that uh, note you can go up here to your uh, media tab and you should find a lot of uh, images right here all the blends and everything all the glows IBL, um, all sorts of different uh, maps. You can go through those on your own time, explore that. And we also have the videos here. Uh, videos, we have digital juice videos, um, water videos. I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, cool, you know, ways you can apply these textures, these video textures to your, uh, you know, the sphere, for example. Another way you can apply maps from your content window is I can take this diffuse. If I just uh, select this um, sphere, for example, and I wanna apply this diffuse video to my sphere, I can click and drag it directly from the content window over here to my texture channel. You can do that from the explore window as well. So if we do that and we play back, we get this, you know, cool looking, uh, you know, sphere of water, if that's uh, possible at all. Uh, we have this cool looking sphere of water. Let's go ahead and control Z undo that. And let's take this diffuse, this water diffuse, and click and drag it directly to the opacity channel. In this case, we get a kind of a cool looking, uh, you know, semi-transparent uh, ghost-like uh, sphere. And you can see we can see through it onto uh, Mason's leg there and everything like that. And notice that uh, this video is a limited length. Uh, so I think at about frame 700 or so, it'll stop playing. Now, if you have a video that stops playing, here's a little uh, pro tip for you. If you want it to uh, loop, you can just uh, press F3 to go into the timeline. And we have our ball selected. Make sure you have object-related track selected on the top here. And let's go down to this uh, section over here and into video. And you can see under the uh, video, uh, under the ball opacity channel, we have this water diffuse. But if we hold Alt and scroll our mouse button, we can zoom out. And you can see, like I mentioned, it only goes about 700 frames. So if we wanted to loop that, we can just simply make sure that we have this loop option selected here. And if it's a perfectly loopable video, it may not be. You can just create another copy of it. And then it'll play and it'll just continue looping. From the beginning so just a cool little uh you know tip if you want to loop videos because i know some people have uh, uh smaller videos now keep in mind that you can only import avi mpeg and wmv videos currently into iclone 6 so you'll have to have uh, one of those formats when you import now let's talk about the image layer billboard and plane to uh, end off this tutorial now to do that i'm going to go back to my uh, explore window here and i have this uh video this fire.avi so let's just right click and drag this uh, fire.avi uh, into our scene right here, anywhere in our scene. Let's right click and let's open it. Let's import it as a plane. So as you can see right now, we have a plane. And if I pan my camera around, it's going to stay at that, uh, you know, position in, uh, in uh, space. So we're going to have this, you know, 2D plane that's basically, uh, we can rotate it around. If I press the E hotkey, I can rotate it like this. So it's basically just your normal plane. Uh, now for a fire, if I, if I play this back, you can see we probably wouldn't, wouldn't want to import it like this. You know, it wouldn't be of much use. This is for kind of, you know, having, uh, you know, posters on surfaces or in, in certain various other situations you would use a plane. But uh, we're just going to delete that for now. You can resize it as well again and move it all, all around if you'd like. I just wanted to show you what the plane import is. In this case, we're going to have a fire in the middle of this uh, wooden basket here. So we're going to import this in as a billboard. And I'll show you the difference in billboard in just a moment. So we'll right click and drag this fire.avi into our uh, scene. We'll import it as a billboard. Now notice when I import it as a billboard, if I rotate my camera left and right, you know, wherever, the um, basically the plane is always facing the camera. And that's what a billboard is. 
However, if I go up and down, you can see that uh, we do get that perspective effect if we go up and down like that. So it's kind of cool, uh, and that's exactly what we need for this case. However, we want to make sure that we don't have this black background, obviously, because it looks kind of silly. So to modify that, to change that, we can go to our materials over here. We have the diffuse channel already already uh, filled up with that video, as you can see the video right there. Let's go Alt-Tab over to our videos again, and let's click and drag this fire.avi directly into our opacity channel. And ta-da, now we have this cool little trick where we can cre create the opacity channel from the main video channel. Now this may not work with for uh, every single video, but uh, you know for typical, you know, um, for a lot of videos it will. So then let's just move this billboard. Let's move it, uh, you know, somewhere into the middle of our uh, scene right here. And we can use the R hotkey to expand it slightly, so we get this, you know, um, larger uh, fire effect. Now keep in mind that the billboard will also be affected by the lighting in your iClone scene, so you can see the uh, light change right there as I change the angle. Uh, let's just maybe move it a little bit uh, over this way. And if we play back, you can see we have this uh, cool looking, uh, maybe there's a little bit coming out over there, but you know, we have this cool looking fire. And of course we need to uh, loop that as well. So having something like this, we have our uh, uh, fire bowl, uh, wooden fire bowl. Don't try this at home, kids. Uh, fire in wooden bowls is never a good idea. Now for image layers, we can find some in the content tab if we go to our uh, stage settings right here and our stage tab rather on the top and we have image layers. I can just double click that and you can see we have some uh, videos and we have some images as well. I can take a video. We have basically these uh, um, ones from uh, Digital Juice that we uh, have obtained. Uh, so we can just double click on that. Now these are, you know, very commercialized as you can see here. If we play back. Uh, image layer is basically something that will stay attached to the front of the camera lens. Look, so no matter which uh, angle I'm at, it'll basically be attached to the front of my camera. So you can import in your own videos. Let's just control Z and undo that. And also images as well. So I can take this image. And now if I want to uh, find the uh, file in the explore window, I can simply right click anything from my content uh, tab over here, my content window, and select find file. And that will open it up in the explore window. Now you can notice that we have a, a various, uh, you know, a couple of different images here uh, for image layers, but we also have the mask layers as well. Now keep in mind that when you apply these from your uh, content menu right here, uh, you can just double click this air fighter for example. Basically it'll apply, if we go to our materials, it'll apply that opacity channel as well uh, automatically. However, if you don't do this, um, it will only apply the diffuse map. So here we go. We have, uh, you know, aiming at uh, Mason. If we wanted to resize this image layer, we can do so as well, uh, wh whichever direction we'd like. We probably don't want to do that. So let's just control Z and undo that. Let's do that a couple times. And that's basically it. Uh, the only thing left to show is accessories on characters. So if we have a character right here, say for example, I uh, double click on Mason, I select him. We can go to our actor tab and down here we have accessories. And if I wanted to, you know, add any of these accessories, let's go down to G6 accessories and we can just double click these sunglasses and those will apply directly to his uh, head, directly to his where sunglasses are mainly supposed to be. Now, uh, generally the uh, accessories that are included will contain information that will apply directly to the corresponding area on your character. So for example, if I double click this beret, it'll apply to his uh, head and not to his knee, for example. Um, these have information that uh, embedded in them that will apply to the correct area of your character. So that's really all there is to uh, drag and drop in iClone. Um, you know, you can have a few more options when you right click and drag into your scene. You can also click and drag uh, audio files to each individual prop in your scene as well. And each individual prop can, can host an audio file. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a separate tutorial. So uh, thank you everyone for watching again. And if you have any questions, we have a great uh, iClone community on at uh, forum.reillusion.com, which is our forums. Or you can just email me or leave suggestions in the YouTube comments below. So again, thanks for watching.